All right, let's now bring in Jim Bianco. He is president and CEO of Bianco Research, as well as Steve Grasso, director of institutional sales at Stuart Frankel. For more, not like these gentlemen need any introductions. Um, uh, Jim, first to you, are you surprised that this unprecedented and really sledgehammer-like action by the Federal Reserve did not do more to quell and calm the equity markets? No, I'm not surprised. And first, I want to push back a little bit on what Steve was talking about with the consensus. The Fed did everything they can. The Fed put does not work anymore. Yeah, you could pretend that there's other tools in the toolbox, but they're not going to work. And the reason the Fed put is not going to work is that there is a mass liquidation going on. Not only are stocks going down, gold is going down, credit's going down, currencies are going down, other commodities are going down. And while bonds are rallying, boy, it has been a very meager rally considering all of the tools that have been thrown at the bond market. Yeah. So everybody's in complete liquidation mode. The Fed put doesn't work. Don't keep asking for them to do more. They'll invent new things, but they'll be equally ineffective like this one has been. Steve, you're down there all day today, buddy. Take us through the day. What was it like? Yeah, so why don't we start from the beginning? You know, we've seen this three halts in the last uh, couple of days, last few days, Brian. And when you're sitting on the floor before the opening bell, that sense of urgency is really starting to build up. Clients hitting you, people talking to you. Dude, I think the market is bottom. The market can't bottom, uh, to Jim's point, only unless we see a headline about some optimism on a vaccine will you see this market bottom out. And we have, we, we're so far away from that. But let's talk about technical levels. 666 in the S&P, all the way up to here, we get a couple of levels that stand out. 2,000 is where Goldman thinks the bottom is. 1,700 is where you get that 618 retracement. Why is that important? Because where the market bounces is usually between the 50% and the 618. And why is it so important to look at technicals? Because no one has a clue on fundamentals. No one knows where this is going to stop. That's why technicals are extremely important. Yeah, and, uh, and Scott Minard, I think, you know, today, and then we talked to him last week, of course, I believe he's on the special tonight, said that 1,700 on the S&P 500, as painful as that sounds, Steve, was not out of the question because you've kind of got to go back to before the financial crisis to kind of almost reset the economy in a way because of all the debt-fueled growth of the last decade. That, that's true. And the, the problem is, is that no one understands what the ramifications could be here. And then to, when President Trump came out and said, maybe it's till August, everyone said, you know what, let me take my chips off the table. Let me sell my gold. Let me sell anything that I can sell. Not that we think it's going lower, but I can get a bid for it. So when you're selling gold, I, I think what you should really watch in the marketplace are the airlines. If you start to see the airlines get bailed out and those stocks bounce, I think it's a sign that maybe there's a rescue wagon coming around the block. Those have to bottom for the market to bottom, the yep. ones that are in the bullseye for Corona. Well, American did rally a little bit today if you want to find some bright spots. You know, Jim, I look at all these things, some of these closed-in bond funds that we never talk about that are out there, some of these high-yield ETFs we mentioned earlier on in the show. When you talk to people inside the credit markets right now, it's clearly they're dislocated a bit. How dislocated are they? No, they're more than a bit dislocated. Lots parts of the credit markets are very dysfunctional. They're not trading properly. There's no bids, or maybe there is, but then if you go to lift it, it disappears. This market is still well from being healthy, and that's one of the reasons I think that the Fed uh, numbers aren't working. Again, I'll come back to the problem is, as Steve was saying, everything's for sale right now. doesn't matter what it is. Everybody's trying to get out of everything. And the only thing that went up today, again, is what the Fed bought, only because they bought it today. And if they were to stop buying it tomorrow, then bond prices, would, uh, treasuries would probably fall as well, too. So there is dislocation. There is dysfunctionality in this market. It is very difficult to trade it. And that's not going to change tomorrow morning or Wednesday. We're going to need something significant to change it. Let's and, say, and Brian, and I, want to be, I want to be optimistic, Steve, because why not? Right. Roche tonight saying that 400,000 sure. test kits are on the way. When the day comes, not if, it will be when, and I know how smart all these scientists are out there working on this thing, hopefully sooner than later, we get a headline of a vaccine <clears throat> that works. 
What does the Dow go up? So, Five thousand. Yeah, I think that that's the number that uh, that I've been tossing around with clients. They've been tossing it back to me, and I think that's probably the agreeable amount. And let's look back to 2018 December when we had that sell-off. That sell-off <laughs> from the time it sold off to get back to those old highs was 143 days. I think most people think we're going to take years and years to make up the ground, and I simply don't think that's the case. I think it will be a whip, whiplash recovery, but does it bounce from the 1700 level or does it bounce from 1500 or does it bounce from 2000? So I'm not calling a bottom here, but I am saying that whiplash back to old highs to where we started this is probably going to shock a lot of people when it's sooner rather than later. You agree with that, Jim? Uh, not really. Oh, I do think there's <laughs> going to be a big whiplash back. No doubt about it. All the way to the new highs. I think there's a lot of long term damage that's being done. A lot of psyches are being changed. A lot of attitudes are being changed. And that's going to stick around for a long time. Now, if you want to be optimistic and you want a more immediate headline that can maybe put a bottom in this market, a vaccine's off. But how about hundreds of thousands of tests? How about a feeling we now know where the virus is in the United States? We know who has it. We know who doesn't have it. We can start to define the problem. Right now, all I see is Disneyland packed, Bourbon Street packed. The bars on St. Patrick's Day packed. We are just creating more cases. Not enough people are taking this seriously. I think this bothers the market. As soon as we take it seriously, as soon as we get more tests and we get an idea of the scope of the problem, then we could start seeking a bottom. Right now, it just feels like an open-ended problem that isn't getting better. Yeah, and forget about the markets. We've already established they're remaining open. That's fine. That's good. Okay. Is there a benefit, Jim, maybe to say, let's just basically stop the economy for two weeks. I mean, take it seriously. I saw San Francisco today saying, basically, you can't leave your home unless you need medical attention or need food. That's likely going to happen in other places, probably New York City in a day or two as the way things are going. Certainly, we've got a ban on non-essential travel in New Jersey from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. now. That's indefinite. Would it be better to have a, sh a two-week complete shutdown of the economy with the idea to cleanse it out or or just kind of try to something else? Uh, you know, I, I, I fear that we're headed that way. And I think that that two-week shutdown is not only going to be the economy, but it's going to be the financial markets as well, too. You can't close the economy without closing the financial markets if we're going to go down that road. Uh, I think that's going to be determined by whether or not we're overwhelming the health care system. But, yeah, that's the fear. Again, this looks open-ended. And that's why I think these markets are having such a hard time with it. If you can give me or the markets in general some kind of definition of uh, how big the problem is, then we can find a bottom real fast. But right now, I don't know what it is, and neither does the market. What's your thought on I that, think, Steve? I, I, hey, Brian, I think that, uh, that, that Jim brings up a great point. Think about this. Only a handful of days ago, we still had a Major League Baseball event happening. We still had NCAA happening. So I think people are fast forwarding and getting panicky really quick and understanding that this is real serious. So I think we're closer to that point of the day of reckoning than we were, uh, you know, a handful of days ago. I yeah. agree with Jim. You need a little more seriousness taken. You need more stoppage. But I think we're about a month or two.